spine. So good stuff. So causes of spinal uh, cord injury trauma in, in acute sense, it's shown in the MRI there. That, that's a bad, bad looking picture there. Fractures, stenosis, acute disc herniation, all of those kind of contribute to that. Tumors can be acute or subacute. Um, natural degeneration um, could be subacute or, or chronic. A stroke uh, in the spinal cord itself, hemorrhage demyelination for various autoimmune disorders, for example, inflammatory transverse myelitis. So all of these can enter your differential diagnosis depending on what you know about the patient. So how can they present motor dysfunction with uh, a defined weakness? Uh, could be very specific or could be diffuse, um, could present as a certain level. Myelopathy, which indicates a spinal cord injury, and we'll talk about that, that carries its own um, sort of diagnosis and can be very insidious. Sometimes folks who have a very slow, gradual spinal cord injury through degenerative changes, for example, of the disc and the ligament rubbing on the spinal cord can have very subtle findings of uh, maybe they've fallen and they're starting to fall a little bit more or they're having difficulty using their fingers for fine motor control um, or urinary incontinence. Um, it's usually uh, overflow incontinence, uh, those, those kinds of things. And they can, tend to get written off as, oh, they're old, or they forget that they've fallen until they really fall and they have a real decline in their spinal cord function. It can present as sensory dysfunction, uh, light touch, proprioception, pain and temperature, uh, autoimmune dysfunction, or autonomic, sorry, dysfunction in sympathetic and parasympathetic uh, pathways. And we'll look at that. And so pure motor dysfunction is, is a weakness. Um, remember that paresis is a partial um, and a plegia or paralysis is a complete. And so those are very specific terms that someone's called, um, they have a paresis or a plegia. They're talking about two very different uh, processes. And so upper motor neuron injury to the CNS, the brain spinal cord, right? And the lower motor neuron injury to the peripheral uh, nervous system, the roots and the peripheral nerves. So injury uh, to an upper motor neuron uh, presents as a weakness, no atrophy, except if they, they haven't been using it for a little bit, no fasciculation, so the little um, uh, fasciculations that you can see in, in the muscle groups, hyperreflexia, increased tone, spasticity, and a babinsi, okay? And in spinal cord injury, hyperreflexia and spasticity is delayed due to the spinal shock. That is, they have an areflexia when uh, you first see them. Um, normal reflex recover over sort of 24 hours um, and shortly thereafter. And then early hyperreflexia and spas outright spasticity can develop uh, later on. For the lower motor neuron, injury to the peripheral nervous system, weakness, okay. Uh, atrophy, this is where we do see atrophy, we do see fasciculations, and we see decreased reflexes and, and tone. And this is just a, a chart comparing uh, lower versus upper. And um, the, in the comments is kind of a neat little mnemonic, lower motor neuron, everything is lowered, less muscle mass, less muscle tone, less reflexes, down going toes. In upper motor neuron, everything is up, tone, uh, deep tendon reflexes, the toes, um, and, and that kind of thing. Um, and so injury to the spinal cord results in upper motor neuron symptoms, injury to the nerve roots and akata equina and lower motor neuron symptoms. And we call that the spinal cord ends from around T12 to, to L2. Hey everyone, Ryan Rad here from NeurosurgeryTraining.org. If you like that video, subscribe and donate to keep our content available for medical students across the world.